Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jerry and Clint here from ThreatGen doing a little Let's Play action on a Wednesday afternoon. I hope you're well. Over the next 45 minutes to an hour, Clint and I will be playing the ThreatGen Red versus Blue Cybersecurity Gamification Platform. It's a platform that basically makes playing video games and learning about cybersecurity one and the same. I'm pretty pumped about it. I will be wanting to play the blue, the blue side today. You can play as the defender or the offender, right? The offsec people, the red team, if you will. And the uh, your opponent will be an active adversary simulation, an AI essentially uh, computer that will be attempting to take over an either denial of service, my manufacturing facility, or just straight up compromise it in the way that red red people do. Clint, something to say before we get going? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the debut of our 1.8. There's a lot of changes on the back end, some visual, a few visual changes. But yeah, this is the first time we're we're publicly streaming uh, version 1.8. So let's have some fun and let's do it. Yeah, let's hope we don't, let's, no bugs, no. Uh, sorry, I, right. I cut so, you off on the intro there. I didn't realize that you... I think there's a delay. Oh, that, that's all good. It's good to see you in chat, Carrie. Hope you're doing well. Guys, you can see here in version 1.8, we've we've got the new labs button here. It's not what we'll be doing today. We'll be playing, but you can see the functionality starting to show. So let's do single player. We'll play as the blue team. I want to do manufacturing plant today. And let's begin the event. We've got our explanations of what we're doing so far and our win conditions essentially getting the red team arrested or surviving the storm long enough hey shane clark good to see you no this isn't the duel this isn't the duel we'll be playing heads up me versus clint on april 15th though all right so welcome it's to the Simon. team guys we're the new ciso at this manufacturing company looking pretty good looks like we're into shipping and logistics making widgets clint all right so just so you guys know you can see at the top left this is our budget we have fifty thousand dollars and we have three analysts let's say two junior analysts one senior analyst and then uh, myself as the chief information security officer we've got our action queue of what we've been doing our action log to show us progress on things that are in in flight if you will countdown timer for us to make our turns and then one through fifty uh, 50 turns if we're going to survive the storm. We have our action tree, which you can see right here. These are all the things that blue team, defenders, SOC analysts, CISOs, this is our world right here. So <clears throat> as the chief information security officer of this particular organization, I start off with nothing. This, this place has nothing. So we're going to do some basic uh, fundamental stuff here right off the rip. We are going to be doing policies and procedures. We'll unlock this skill tree of two-factor auth, IR procedures, network traffic, et cetera. So let's definitely do that. You can see two of my FTEs have disappeared because they're off writing policies, talking to the engineering staff, figuring out how procedures work. Hey, Jess Bishop, good to see you in chat. This is our network topology because we're the blue team. We know what our network looks like. And by the way, just as a fun fact from a practitioner's real life, if I started at a new organization day one and they were able to provide me a network topology to this level of detail, I would be stunned. Clint, I don't know about you, but in my in my experience, in my world, you get there and you've got a network diagram that's from like 2017. They did because an internal external audit came and required it. Nothing's updated. It's not even at the right level. But in the game, we are given yeah. that benefit. Even that, and that's even if they have a topology diagram at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I will say, uh, normally I go right into asset inventory with my my other first, uh, my opening move, if you will, my, my opening chess move. But I've been thinking more about it. And, you know, when you come to an organization, yeah, you need to know what assets are there so you can protect them. But... At the end of the day, two-factor authentication, gateway, firewall, some basic security operations. These are all things that you know you're going to need no matter what. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that gateway all in. You can see now all my FTEs are fully applied. So they are off working. I don't have any more um, people to do anything. And obviously, I have money, but that's 
that's fine. We got our progress here on what what's going on. So this is going to take three turns to develop the policies and procedures and one turn for the gateway firewall. So to put that in reality, the gateway firewall, Palo Alto just shipped it. it we rack and stack and turned it on and it's good to go. Whereas the policies and procedures, we need to get our staff uh, engaged. What kind of company starts off without a firewall? Hey, you know what, Clint? Small businesses move fast, right? They're agile. They're, they're working on solutions. They're not working on security. So looks like we got our gateway firewall in place, which is absolutely fantastic. You can see at the level of detail it gives us, I know it's a little hard to see, but you get an IP address, MAC address, all the things that you would normally expect, um, well, from asset inventory, right? So I do appreciate that. We've got our one FTE back. Let's look at our skill tree and see what we've unlocked. Nothing yet because we're still doing the policies and procedures. What else are we going to do? Let's do that asset inventory. Asset inventory. Now, it is going to take three turns, which is brutal because our, our um, policies and procedures are still being developed. This is one of those ones where... I, you know, I, I have to I have to really think through it. If I can if I commit my asset inventory for three turns, that means next turn all of my assets are fully committed, and I really don't get a next turn. Whereas if I install the sim, I'll free up that resource again, and they can start doing something. It is a tough call. I'm going to go ahead and do the asset inventory because I need to unlock some of these um, skill tree items. Let me. Well, hold on. You know what? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to install the sim to unlock some of this stuff. I'm going to install video surveillance. No, no, no. That's three turns. Uh, all right. I'm just going to do asset inventory. It literally is the CIS controls, number one control. It's in every control framework. There's, You know what? There's no shortcuts in cybersecurity, Clint. You know that, right? No shortcuts, no easy button. I mean, there kind of is. What? What's I'm, the easy button? Okay, there's no easy button. I would say, you know, things like multi-factor authentication is a is a shortcut to broader bang for your buck, but it's not an easy button cuz it's not easy to implement. No, it's not. That I will tell you from real experience for those in chat, rolling out multi-factor authentication sounds simple in practice, right? Like you yourself set up your multi-factor on your phone, takes a few minutes, no big deal. When you are rolling it out to even a population of a thousand users, it is incredibly complicated and it can take months. I'm talking people who don't want to install an app on their phone because they think that you're actually spying on their phones. People who don't own mobile phones, right? Or they have flip phones. They need hardware tokens. Hardware tokens cost money. They have to be shipped out to the sites. They have to be configured. It, it gets you know messy quick. As, as I said before, now all three of my assets or my, my analysts are committed. So I don't really get a turn. I will take a moment to look at my network diagram. This is a pretty sweet, sweet layout. We've got what looks like our corporate infrastructure stuff over here, our active directory domain. Hey, Malik. Hey, Rand. Good to see you. We've got our DMZ zone. Uh, well, this is our DMZ. This looks like our corporate end users. Uh, so just three, you know, three end users. This could be Tom and finance. Olivia in accounting and Kim in uh, HR. Got some network appliances, pretty standard stuff, right? Switches. Now comes our industrial control system area. Now, I'm not a huge industrial control expert. One cool thing about the platform that's worth showing, I can click on the PCS historian and it tells me a little bit more about it, but uh, I should be able to, uh, Clint, where, where do I go? Because I, I don't know what a historian does but there or an engineering workstation, but there's definitely a way to find out, right? Yep, you can click on the question mark there where you're at. Uh, there you go. And you can just search uh, under assets, go to assets. Oh, okay. Click on assets. Oh, here they yeah, are. Yeah, you yep. can just search for historian, yeah. All right, so actually, let me go to engineering yeah. workstation because that seemed important the other day. So in the game, you actually get some, some like, like think of it as almost like a wiki, but for people using the platform to understand better what's going on. So again, I don't work in an ICS world. So understanding what an engineering workstation is important, right? The engineering workstation is what 
the engineers used to program and interface with all of the PLCs and radios, right? Prime target for hackers. So this is good for me to know, right? As someone who's trying to defend a fictitious manufacturing facility, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know the engineering workstation is essentially, this is a high priority target. This is essentially like a VIP system, right, Clint? Yeah, the engineering workstation in a lot of cases is that's the keys to the castle. Interesting. Very good to know. All right. So I'm going to focus on securing the crop out of this, guys. But let's end our turn right now. Blue team. All right, guys. This is great. The new notification is... window. <clears throat> Go ahead. I was just saying that it's the new notification window. Instead of getting like three different pop-up windows for each type of notification, it's all unified right there, kind of like a quest window. Yeah, I love this. This Whoever recommended this feature be included, thank you. I, I, th I think this is a great look. And you can see here, I can click on either one to see what exactly happened, right? So the perimeter firewall was installed, which is good. It helps secure bad guys from the network, right? So this is good. And don't forget the flavor right. text uh, under each notification. We, we spent a lot of time finding quotes for flavor text. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. So check it out. I've now got two of my analysts freed, and I think I was able to unlock the skill tree under here. Okay. okay. Again, guys, blocking and tackling, basic stuff. Multi-factor authentication is critically important, especially in... I mean, it's a zero trust architecture. It's 2022. P's in their own phones. People are using cloud systems. People are working from home. Got to have that 2FA in place. Also worth noting, you'll notice the network is in green. And these are the assets that I can touch. And I guess the this workstation that's from coming from Starbucks somewhere on the internet is, you know, kind of corporate assets. But this tan area right here, this is not functional. I cannot do anything with that. Clint, why why can I not do anything with this? Because that's the actual physical process out in the plant, right? So that's the stuff that's kinetic. That's that's your physical buttons, an actual motor, a generator, a robotic arm. Those are things that um, aren't you know they're not they're not they're not the responsibility of the cybersecurity team or even the IT team. Now, what you will see is you have a DCS operator there. That's going to be that sort of is representative of your HMI, your field HMI there down at the bottom, HMI PC S73, um, you know, but either way, it, it's it's not the responsibility of cybersecurity to mess in that space there. Interesting. Very good to know. So it's, well, and that's also as, just, as a side benefit. Go ahead. Yeah, this delay is killing me. Um, but it, that's also that's the that is the purpose of your business right there. That's your production. Those are the critical things. So when those go belly up or catch on fire or whatever, blow up or, or don't function properly, that's at that point that that's for the game purposes. That's when you lose the game. That's what you're protecting here. Uh, good to know. So again, in threat trend, red versus blue cybersecurity gamification platform. And I have almost 20 years of cybersecurity experience. So a lot of the these things um, I'm kind of taken as common, but I've never worked really in an ICS OT space. So for me, this platform is really educating me on that type of technology and that type of world. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting benefit from this. I love it. So let's end the turn as our staff begins to deploy 2FA. Okay. So it uh, looks like uh, the notifications kind of just persist. Uh, over time so you can track your historic your history um we've finished our asset inventory which is good i think we still have actions going right yes we can see how our progress is going so we can map out our our long-term execution right our long-term plan and strategy because guys you should not even in like real life when you're when you're running a cybersecurity program or maturing a cybersecurity program you shouldn't be acting tactically for for like what you're doing next right you should have a strategy you should be doing things in a prioritized fashion based on risk reduction budget um, available resources and executing on them so you know by looking at something like this you can be like okay i've still got two turns of two analysts being locked down so i should be thinking about kind of 
one analyst, one or one analyst, two turn type activities that align with my long-term strategy. So this engineering workstation is definitely um, critically important. I want to start unlocking getting EDR or endpoint detection and response. This is huge. I think I need to put a SIM place to get that. Yeah, see the SIM is right here. The EDR is right here, which is a skill tree unlock under the SIM. And the reason is two technologies are different, but when the EDR goes off, typically you'll configure it to send telemetry to the SIM. So you can have a aggregated kind of, uh, oh my God, I can't believe I'm gonna say it, a single pane of glass of what is going on. So this is one person, one turn. So let's go ahead and do that. End our turn. Again, I'm trying to put in basic fundamental uh, protection controls right now. We have threat monitoring, perfect. So now our SIM is in place. So for our next skill tree, now that we have a SIM, I wanna put an EDR on that engine workstation right here. See, this is what's going on. So basic, real quick, Nico uh, made a comment that um, he wishes that this was on mobile. We had it on mobile at one time and um, there's a lot of logistical upkeep uh, things that go along with having it on so many platforms, but we are, we are considering releasing it on mobile uh, officially, maybe. Nice, nice. I see Dave Klein in chat, good to see you, Dave. So I'm gonna install EDR on the engineering workstation. Again, like when I'm rolling out a program, I like big ticket um, items like multi-factor authentication protects all of my end users, right? Gateway firewall protects, you know, essentially my entire network, right? We could, we could argue the semantics of that, but when I install EDR on the engineering workstation, I'm really only securing one asset of the whole thing. So you could make the argument, well, Jerry, maybe you should be looking at doing some other stuff, right? Network segmentation, for example, security awareness, which is hugely valuable. But simply because of the level of physicality and sensitivity of this engineering workstation, I'm gonna make an exception and I'm gonna deploy EDR on it right now. If that machine gets pwned, I need to know. It's, it's, it's of vital importance. But I will tell you from a strategy perspective, security awareness is the next thing I'm gonna do when I have the ability to do it. Why? Again, it's one of those ones that I'm able to cover a large swath of risk with one single control. Most people think technical controls are the end all be all of great cybersecurity. And while multi-factor authentication is a technical control and it's hugely valuable, security awareness is incredibly valuable. If you can educate your end users, they're the ones who are likely to see suspicious things happening, not you. So security awareness, very important. Let's keep rolling. By the way, the music you hear in the background is Jerry's own music. The in-game music is much cooler. Would you like to hear the in-game music, Clint, to showcase it? It doesn't matter to me. You, you do you. Okay. Well, let's just keep rolling on this then. It, 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 this is how I CISO, Clint. This is how I CISO. Uh, Clint, Gary had a question. Dev Nilzen, um on balance issues. Uh, Are you seeing it? Are you seeing oh, the there it? Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have the balance issues been worked on? I uh, uh, played a couple months ago and was able to win as red team way too easily. Um, yes. So we did do some red team balancing specifically around some of the physical entry. It's not so easy to just bull rush your way in physical security, beeline to HMIs or do USB drops. We balanced a lot of that. And that was where some of the, um, the balance issues were on the red team but yeah we have worked on that and we're always going to continually be working on balance issues as we evolve the game and add new features great question thank you so i've got all of my assets back and i still got 37 g's so we're not really we're in april christmas party holiday parties quite a ways away so we don't need to think about budgeting for that so i'll just continue to invest in my security as i mentioned before security awareness unbelievably valuable but what do we have here Here's a 1.8 upgrade. Yeah. Is this always here? 
Well, you so I, now I, I don't what remember you can do... this skill tree going this deep here. Yeah, so um, now you have to have security skills training in order to do threat hunting, and you can now do things internally. So if you have uh, the security skills training, which is advanced training, you can now do vulnerability assessments and pen testing using people instead of a more cost. So it no longer costs you a lot of money to do those things because you can now do them internally. Very nice. I, I love that upgrade because it's it's very representative of, of reality. And that's like, I know we're playing the game right now, but that's one of the things I like about this platform because it really is aligned to like real real life um the way that you build a program the way you decide between professional services and internal staff right whether or not you you get a platform to help you do some type of um activity or you develop it in-house it's it's very realistic but let's do our well, security it, it, awareness screen keep going while you're doing that, I'll mention two things. Yeah, that was the whole intent of, of building this game was for real world training. So we had to make it as realistic as we could while minimizing the level of technical skill required. But uh, one thing I want to point out is in that skill tree there, um, one thing we're going to probably do in a hot fix is the advanced security skills training should not have the prerequisite of awareness training because technically those are two different things with two different sets of people in your organization. So we're going to move mm. that out from underneath that prerequisite. That's smart. I, I see a new skill here, Harden RDP. I'm not saying because I started working at Threat Gen, but what I am saying is <laughs> nothing gets me more mad. Oh, I forgot to do my turn. Nothing gets me more mad than um, uh, 3389 open to the internet. Okay, so yeah, and, I, and, and the thing about ahead. that is, yes, you have influenced some of the development so far while since you've been at ThreatGen, but I gotta say, our new beta tester or SQA analyst, um, Greg, he has been harping on that RDP issue on the terminal server for months. So we finally put in Harden RDP. Very nice, Harden Greg, good. So I, I missed my turn and this, you could argue that this is representative of real life too, guys. So I missed my turn. My analyst um, was basically um, just sitting, watching Netflix, feet kicked up because I didn't assign the analyst to do any work. This video surveillance is a one person who I put that analyst on, but it takes three turns. So because I missed a turn, this is really like a four turn um, decision point, right? So shame on me. For not maximizing my resources, especially considering how constrained my resources are. Yet another reality of working in cybersecurity. Never enough people, never enough. There can always be enough money. Like businesses will throw money at security, right? That's not the problem. It's it's having the people to do something, right? You can buy a shiny new appliance. If you don't have staff to run it, tune it, report on it, etc. cetera, it, it's not good. It doesn't work. So there's a question for me, but I think uh, this might be a question for you if it's not game related. There was a question. Um, I do see this, by the way, but uh, how can I get more experience to get into IT remotely? Now, are you talking real life or are you talking um, in game? If you're talking, I'm assuming you're talking real life. And that's a that's a question. And that is a broad question to answer. And I would say the best way to answer that question is go over to Jerry's other channel, Simply Cyber, because that's the kind of stuff they talk about all the time. Yep. Yep. Carrie is a member, card carrying member of the Simply Cyber community. Um, wow. He's been doing the work, putting in the effort. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of just uh, grinding, Carrie. You know, uh, studying those those fundamentals. You know, check out that GRC course. I know you you've been looking at it, working through it. Um, that's going to help Sec Plus. I'll give you some of that foundationals. If you go to Sands, um, oh gosh, what is it called? Clint, you'd have to pull it up. It's like Sans All Stars or Sans Security Stars. It's a free uh, foundational course, right? Get all that foundational information, get it good. And then, Carrie, I, I would say, you know, you're doing the right things with networking, but maybe, you know, start documenting what you've been working on, whether on LinkedIn or a blog or within the build labs. Side. Yeah, labs are good. Build labs um, and do a lot of hands on stuff. Every project you get involved in, at, whether it's at school or personally, helping friends out, doing labs, put all that stuff on your resume as experience. Absolutely. And, and Carrie, I, I, you should know this, but if you don't, uh, over at simplysite.io under the free resources section, there's three different resume templates, free. You don't even have to like give me an email or anything. 
And uh, you can use those. And one of them is designed for highlighting lab experience um, to, to basically kind of showcase it as work experience. So I got this video surveillance stuff going in. I've got two analysts who definitely need to be put to work. Where's how much is network segmentation? That's another really good one. That's expensive, but it's so worth it. it, It's two staff, three turns, I think. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do it guys. I'm going to do it. Here's the thing. I'm almost completed like my big ticket wide reaching security controls and the game I'm about to pivot into, um, you know, focusing on hardening my ICS, my OT, my Active Directory over here on the corporate side. Good. All right. Loiter or remove from perimeter. Now, I'm just going to say I find it interesting that the security awareness training completed and then... All of a sudden, people knew to ask that person walking around with a clipboard, hey, what are you doing here? Where's your badge? Why are you carrying that ladder? Do you have right? Who's who's <laughs> escorting you? The loiterer was suspicious. Now, whether or not they were a wandering vagrant or if they were an APT, it doesn't matter. They have no business being there. Now, you'll notice the police officer here, the threat intel score has bumped up to 1% because we moved that loiterer off the property. Um, once we vi- finish the video surveillance, it's going to be even harder for those loiterers or potential uh, pen testers to get on the property. Um, so this is all, you can see the value of the controls are starting to pay dividends. I will be playing Clint heads up. So right now I'm playing an active adversary kind of AI um computer intelligence they are the offensive security professionals but you can play heads up player versus player and on april 15th at 11 a.m and i'll be i'll be chiming this all over simply cyber april 15th at 11 a.m clint and i will be playing head heads up on two different streams i'll be doing my stream on simply cyber he'll be doing his stream on threat gen and through infosec live and uh, no stream sniping, but we will go head to head and I will dominate him. I don't care if he's my boss. There will be no, no, no <laughs> friends that for that hour, Clint. I think that um, yeah, I'm, I'm really just going to be an advisor to Simon. I think you're really playing Simon. Oh, OK. Well, that makes it a little bit more fair. I thought it was slightly unfair that the lead developer of the game was going against me. But um I'm, I, I, would, I wouldn't call. I'm not the programmer though. Aaron Shabib is our lead programmer, and by the way, it was his idea to have the new, um, the new notification interface. But uh, I'm I don't write that much code in the game anymore, so I'm not as familiar with the mechanics anymore. I mean, Greg and and Matt, one of our other developers, uh, Gregor SQA, and Matt, one of the co-founders of Threadgen, and and Aaron, those guys are all a lot more familiar with the inner workings and the tricks and the secrets than I am now. So, okay, well, good, that's fair. And really quick shout out, Jess Bishop, I see you in chat on YouTube talking about going to start look at Conti's TTPs. Uh, just so you know, uh, Simply Cyber Live on April 28th, I believe, we're actually going to be having Dave Klein, who's also in chat, uh, on as a guest. And we are going to be talking about Conti Ransomware. Uh, so just be aware of that. It help help fill in. I might even do a produced video, Jess, on um, on Conti's, uh, essentially, uh, that those leaked internal communications. But we'll see. Uh, I'm not 100% committed yet on that. All right, let's end the turn. Go to simplycyber.io to get all that info, right? Yep. Yeah, you can go to simplycyber.io or simplycyber.io slash FTF, which stands for first things first, the morning threat briefing I do. But you can go there and all the upcoming live streams will be there, including the me versus Clint on the 15th, um, the upcoming talk. Well, actually, the, the Conti one with Dave Klein is not scheduled yet because I have to make the promo art. Um, there was a last minute change with with uh, with that particular show. Okay, so I've got one of my assets available. My video surveillance system is installed. I am feeling pretty good about myself, guys. Like at this point, I might go to Starbucks and get a coffee. Like that's that's how I'm feeling. I feel I can sleep at night. I've got 2FA. I've got awareness training. I've got video surveillance. My engineering workstation is hard. I've got a sim. 
this is this is for me clint for me personally like if i was going to relate this to chess from a cybersecurity ciso perspective i feel like i have just completed my opening my opening move or you know what yeah. I mean? like my 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 opening um gambit if you will and now i'm on to stage two or act two of like all right let's begin to really harden certain things and, and focus on areas instead of the, the wider program. So I've got one I absolutely, analyst. Go ahead. I would absolutely, I would absolutely agree with that analogy because I do the same thing. And I think a lot of people do when you're playing red versus blue, everybody kind of has their opening setup depending on what they think the other player is going to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. Technical noob calling out that GRC masterclass. Super pumped about that class. Over 2,000 students in two weeks, uh, helping a lot of people. I've gotten a lot of personal notes from people about how that course has helped them uh, in, their, in their situation in life. So super pumped. Thank you for sharing that news with us. Uh, all right, so I've got one more turn until... Oh, congratulations, Nico. Getting that CYSA plus, you know what's up. Looking to be a SOC analyst, perhaps? I think that's really good for SOC analyst work. Network segmentation is almost done, which I'm going to feel great about. Let's see if I can use my one person to do something valuable for that next one turn. Implement strong Wi-Fi. I don't really feel, I'm not feeling that. ICS safe testing methods, not feeling that. Vulnerability mapping, install network security sensor. I do like network security sensors, but since we're doing network segmentation, I'm feeling that might be a little overkill in that particular space. Um, 30 seconds, guys. What, what are we thinking here? Um, you know what? Let's, let's do uh, another point to control. So the HMI. So this is a good one. I'm going to, I'm going to do the HMI one, but if I had more time, if I was playing by myself, I would actually go into the wiki here, look at assets, and pull up the two assets, this controller and this HMI, to see which one is valuable. I'm going to guess the HMI right now, and I'm going to install EDR on that. So I can get that telemetry if this particular box gets pwned. All right. Looks like we got an award just for being awesome. Perimeter secured, network segmented, security monitored, employed. You've got a solid base for your network security now. Yes, we are winning so hard. I'm going to the board, uh, the board meeting after my first quarter being on the job and reporting how hard I'm winning at being good at information security. So you can see the color of our network has changed from all green to a multitude of colors. This is because of network segmentation also incredibly hard control to implement well that you need an organization that is committed to um to onboarding network segmentation if you don't have top level commitment on that you can pay a lot of money for an access control solution that's just configured with open any any all right so we've got our three assets or analysts we've got fourteen thousand dollars requesting budget takes three turns and one asset so Let's take a look. We're, we're getting close to needing to request budget. By the way, we just got told how great we're doing by, by, the, by the board. So requesting budget isn't really an outrageous thing to ask for. Hiring but a staff. Have you done a vulnerability like, assessment? No, I haven't done a vulnerability assessment. That's still here. Uh, that's going to take two people, three turns. Harden RDP, uh, one person, two turns. I'm actually going to harden the RDP since I'm such a outspoken advocate of how much this annoys me. So I'm going to do that. Yep. I'm going to obviously do this right here. Now we've got two people in 14 grand. And I feel because Clint just said this, I'm going to investigate this. I'm going to do a vulnerability assessment, guys. Part of the reason why is because it unlocks a, a tree that you... Guys, I'm telling you right now. Default Don't creds. The same mistake. Default creds are gonna are gonna be the end of me. Like default creds or solar winds one two three are just gonna kill me. Like that's that's that's, that's what's gonna take um, take me in. Friends will smoke and, and and drink too much, Clint, because that's not that's not gonna be what kills me. It's gonna be default creds. <laughs> All right. 
Let's end the turn. We are getting low on cash, guys. It looks like it might be a, uh, a well liquor holiday party this year. Okay, what do we got here? All of our assets are committed. We got $4,000. We've been on the job for two weeks. Let's see how we're doing. We got another turn to harden that uh, terminal server and two turns for vulnerability assessment. You can see our firewalls are here too, guys. Um, I think I'm going to prioritize putting EDR on the firewalls, which which isn't exactly how it works in real life, but basically, <laughs> exactly, let me in. Basically, for the game's sake, installing EDR on the firewalls allows heightened telemetry uh, to be fed into your sim and, and effectively make you, as the SOC analyst, aware of what's of um, anomalous behavior. So I'm going to end the turn. Okay. But something just happened, right? We hardened our RDP. That's good. So, so obviously, lo log me in. Let me in. <laughs> uh, isn't going to work for you this time, Dave Klein. But we've got um, one more turn for our vulnerability assessment. And that's when we're going to start going buck wild, right? Where we're going to be dropping our analysts. It's like, hey, you go harden that server. Hey, you go put this on this firewall. Um, so we definitely want to just do a one person, one turn action right now. It might not be the best one for what I would want to do for a cybersecurity program, but I don't want to have a resource committed uh, through the turn when our vulnerability assessment comes up because I'm going to want to start using those assets. So you can see all these like ICS vendor cert, one person, two turns. Not loving that. Install a network security sensor. There we go. This is good. I'll do this one. And you could see, you could drop it into each of the network segments, except for the this network segment over here. Clint, any particular reason? Is it is it uh, ill-advised to drop um, network sensors into kind of OT environments? Uh, no, because they're passive. In fact, it's you know mm -hmm. recommended. Now there are certain in real life there are certain OT sensors that that you need to be specialized for OT, so they could pick up specific OT protocols, but um, but you know, as long as they're completely passive, there's no risk. Okay. So may maybe maybe by putting it here, you get, you get like, because I can't drop one into this this network segment right here, but just so you guys understand right. my my methodology, I'm, I want to put one here because this is where the engineering workstation is and that's going to control all of my OT. And then also I want to put one over here because this is my corporate infrastructure, right? These are my end users and they're more likely to get compromised than this stuff initially. But bad guys are looking for crown jewels. Like they don't care if they got Carl's Windows 7 box. They care if they got AD, right? Because that's where you can push out <laughs> GPOs and malware and ransomware and stuff. So I'm going to focus my effort by starting here and I will get around to putting a network sensor over there. In your OT environment there, that illustrates what I just said about you need special OT uh, threat monitoring. You can mm -hmm. actually, as an action, you can you can deploy ICS threat monitoring. In oh, game. interesting. Okay, so this might be a little uh, nerve wracking. You can see now that we've completed our vulnerability assessment that all of our assets just about have this yellow shield with a red exclamation point. Now, Clint, where is the, isn't there, where's the, where is the, like, um, the legend, right? If you didn't know what that was. So, you know what I'm about? there's actually, I thought we had a legend for the blue team. I guess we don't. I guess mm -hmm. it's only for the red team because there's a lot more icons, but, um, uh, yeah, it's in the game guide is where it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Oh, interesting. We need okay. To add a legend. We need to add one to the blue team. Yeah. And I, and I love this. Like if the application is, I mean, if the interface is getting a little busy for you, you can you know toggle this off. I, I typically leave it on because I, I like to see the host names. Um, but the shield basically means that there's active vulnerabilities on all of these themes. You can see that this switch has default creds. You can see the engineering workstation has a weak password, incorrect access control, susceptible to heap overflows. So they're unique for each system, although some systems can share vulnerabilities. 
And this is where I was telling you about where now I want to deploy my resources to go fix these individual things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the network sensor over in the corporate area that I told you about. Right here. Okay. And now I'm going to start needing my, um, my engineering workstation, right? I'm going to pass. Oh, hold on. Where's my main gateway firewall? Here's another thing, guys. This is the front door to your world. And it's a little less common in zero trust architecture, but like this is the front door. Oh, Carrie, you're the best. <laughs> so let's look at our gateway firewall. Okay, you guys ready to get nauseous? This is the gateway firewall to the entire corporate network default credentials. I told Wait. you this is going to be the death of me. Look what you just did. You made the same mistake. You ran what? a vulnerability assessment on your, you ran a vulnerability assessment on your entire network uh, without implementing safe ICS testing uh, procedures and you knocked over a PLC. So I have to re reboot this thing now instead of securing my, so this, hey, you want to talk about the struggle? Do you reboot your asset and get your business online or do you change default creds on your gateway firewall? The struggle's real. The answer, unfortunately, is reboot asset because you're there to help the business make money. Damn. Good catch, Clint. Thank you. And now you're out of money. Oh my God. Dude, I told you I was going to go to Starbucks and get like a caramel macchiato a couple turns ago because I felt so good. And now I'm broke. I got hardware down, default credits on gateway firewall. Oh, hey, I just got 10 Gs. Thank you. Whoa, low budget I, request, <laughs> low budget allowance. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. That's good. So that's interesting, Clint. Does So the game will give you money if you run out. It's good. Let me change the default um, credits. No, look at, your look at your notifications. You just got a basically a bonus. If you if, uh, <laughs> click on the exclamation point on the top right, yeah, and budget. Look at that budget. There you go. Wow! So that was incredibly convenient. Thank you. Hey, you know what? Sometimes uh, the computer gods they take, and sometimes they give. And <laughs> what a splendid coincidence that the day I ran out of budget. I got a $10,000 bonus for being awesome. Little does the board know that I'm freaking out about default creds on the gateway. But, you know, guys, I know Dave Klein in chat, you you're, you got a little bit of the gray in the hair too. You don't, you don't go into level of detail about the gateway firewall having default creds at the board meeting. They don't want to hear that. They're, they're at like 150,000 foot overview. You just say we're... 80% secure with low risk. Any questions, right? So we don't have to worry about that. All right. So we put those creds there. Um, we've got two analysts. I continue. I want to continue to harden this stuff. Um, let's see the historian. Oh my God. It, it, I almost get overwhelmed with all these alerts. System hardening. There's two turns. Patching. Update firmware. Default creds on this guy. Not feeling that. Do any of these other firewalls have... See, here we go. Default creds. Get out of here with that. Install EDR. Install EDR. Okay. I'm going to put EDR on this particular network segment. Uh, because, again, I'm, I really want to protect this PCS network. Okay. This is the the gauntlet, the hairy part of, of the game where I'm I'm feeling a little... Uh, tummy trouble. Like, this is why they sell Pepto-Bismol at the uh, Quick Marts near business parks. Because executives, like CISOs particularly, are having indigestion from, from stress and nerves. Yes, another loiterer move. Security awareness and um, video surveillance for the win. Don't come and hang around here no more. <laughs> This thing bumped up to 3%. We're doing all right there. We've got our three full assets. Let's take a look at, at our um, our skill tree. Go for a big ticket item now that I've I've kind of shored up that other stuff. All right, so ICS vendor certification, I safe testing method. Now, I don't know the difference between those two, so I'm going to just take a quick look here. Safe testing is establishing vulnerability and testing methods safe for ICS environments. 
prevent damaging ICS. Okay, this is what I want to do because I keep knocking over my assets. Effectively, the threat actors don't need to attack my infrastructure. I'm attacking my own infrastructure. Okay, so we've got that EDR. Okay, so I'm going to put an EDR on this network segment as well. Simply because I, I should be hardening it, but I'm hoping that by putting EDR on it, if a threat actor does exploit the vulnerability on this box, at least I'll know about it and I can deploy um, resources to go you know, address it. Speaking of that, I'm going to upgrade my IR procedures right here. One analyst, three turns. It's a little costly, but I feel like we've we've now had multiple loiterers arrested on the premise. Level of concern, my risk profile is going up. My my concern is higher. So now I want to bolster my IR staff, right? We had, you know, one analyst who it kind of was doing it as a hobby, studying the CYSA, said, hey, I can do SecOps work. Well, now we need to like uh, mature that overall process, make it more um, mature. So go develop some procedures. Let's figure out what's up in case we don't. It, well, hopefully we don't need it, but we might. Here we go. Sixty five hundred dollars. I should be requesting budget. Uh, so I got one person. I'm going to request budget. Hold on. Does does. See, all of these things don't cost money, like system patch and system hardening. I think I can go a couple turns without spending money. Look at our AD creds here. Update AV, system patching, that's not too bad. Um, okay. I'm going to install EDR on the gateway firewall. I'm just a little concerned of that particular asset. All right, here we go. I see a safe testing method's good. Compromised asset detected? You discovered a compromised asset. You should activate IR and clean or replace the affected asset ASAP. Guys, this game has an active adversary playing against me. Like a computer AI is playing against me. When I just told you I needed to develop IR procedures because I was getting a little tummy troubles, I didn't know this was going to happen. It's just you know, whatever, gut instinct. And it was my gateway firewall. Guys, I just deployed EDR there. This thing could have been popped a month ago and I didn't know about it. So this is a real problem. This is why you put EDR and get telemetry on mission critical resources. So I just hit activate IR as nauseating as it is. It takes a turn to do it. So because I still have two analysts and I'm not a fool, I do want to utilize those analysts to do something while we're um, while we're waiting for IR to activate because the gateway firewall oh you're crushing it Carrie because the gateway firewall just went off I'm going to begin focusing my efforts at hardening things in this network segment it, it, as important as it is over here I've got I've got you know basically telemetry i've got verified evidence that there's a problem on this segment so i'm going to start strengthening all this stuff right let's deploy edr on this device and let's let's patch the um the ad server the ad server active directory is often seen as the crown jewel of any company's network so you definitely want to make sure that that thing's protected don't give everybody domain admin Start with that. Okay, guys. IR procedures created. IR mode activated. So we're in IR now. So we can't do things like install AV, right? We can only disconnect devices from the internet. Now, what's kind of nauseating is <laughs> this particular device would be the equivalent of me unplugging the company from the internet, which that's a tough call that some CISOs once in a while in their career have to make. Let's see what Dave's saying. In my experience, past life as a Cisco engineer, I can tell you how often I'd help a customer file upgrade and find my prep files from the last time I visited the customer two years prior. These devices need to be managed and watched as much as your endpoints and servers. Preach. It's so true. It's so true. A lot of people see like 
switches and routers as like, oh, those are just kind of pass through appliances, no big deal. But no, like that you can do some serious damage. I mean, heck, look at um, Facebook went offline the other day because of a BGP route update that was uh, a mistake, right? So network devices matter. Okay, I don't want to disconnect this thing from the network because that will screw everything up. It's the network gateway firewall. I would love to gather forensics on it. But it's gathering forensics. Yeah, gathering forensics is going to increase your threat intelligence score. That's one win condition for you. Also, keep in mind that if you disconnect things, anything that is not connected um, to the internet or isn't in production has different variable costs to your production and that your 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 production meter your profit loss and production meter up there the multicolored meter um if that gets too far down in the red for five consecutive turns you lose yeah all right well so here here's what i'm thinking hey guys i don't want to wait two turns to gather forensics when my net firewall is compromised replacing the asset that would guarantee root it out, right? Especially if they have installed like uh, a, you know, like a boot, a boot root kit. Um, going a little extreme. We just saw in first things first Monday this week that Borat Rat Remote Administration Tool or Remote Access Trojan is being seen in the wild. So maybe that's what they stuck in there. I'm just gonna clean the asset, and sadly, it's because you can't see it because my name's over it. But thank you, Clint. Um, the asset replacement is $5,000. I only have 5,500 and I really don't want to burn my whole budget, even though I'm like actively being attacked. So I'm just going to clean the asset and pray. Here's the thing. If I clean the asset, I won't have enough money to replace the asset. If in fact, it doesn't effectively clean the asset. So shoot, I'm going to replace the asset. I didn't want to spend that money. I didn't want to spend that money, Clint, but I can't risk it if, if because if I clean the asset and it doesn't work because they have a boot root kit in there, I'm going to have to request more budget and that takes three turns and I, I can't be owned for that long. Dang. You probably need to request more budget anyway. No, I, I, I will. I will, but I, I don't want to be under active attack while that's happening. That's probably right, the best so the time asset. to get budget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, uh, Dave, Dave's been chiming in here uh, throughout the stream, right? Like, Clint makes a solid point. The best time to ask for money is while you're actively being attacked or uh, right afterwards when the wound is still fresh in the business's mind. All right, so let's request. We have to deactivate IR, which takes a turn. Can I request budget while I'm under assault here? Yes. Cool. And deactivate IR. And what can I do with my two assets? I really do anything with my two assets. This is all locked out. All locked out. I can't really do anything. What a waste. Too bad. So these two analysts are basically, you know what? They worked Watching over the, the weekend. train wreck. Well, this is another <laughs> kind of reality, right? As much as I would love to put these people to work, Log4j happened on a Saturday. You know, I forget what the exchange uh, vulnerability was early in 2021, but there was like four zero days for exchange. A lot of people worked all over the weekend. We just dealt with an active incident. These two analysts burned the midnight oil and helped replace that asset. So I'm going to give them the day off um, to mental health. Giving them the day off right when everything is on fire, at least your firewall. Oh, it's been fixed, though, so it looks like it was worth it. Yeah, exactly. Now, now they're back. Get them back to work. I hope you enjoyed your break. As far as you Get know, it, as far as you know, it's fixed. Well, yeah. As I mentioned, um, I'm going to uh, heart begin hardening these uh, endpoints. Again, I'm going to install EDR on this. My last 500 bucks. Do I really want to spend my last 500 on EDR for a server router? I don't. Let's change the default creds. If I was going to employ EDR on something, what would it be? Hmm. En engineering workstation, historing, anything in, anything that is a PC or a server in your process environment is where you should be focusing most of your security until that's oh. clean. 
in this in this uh, thing. Okay. So, really heavy emphasis on ICS and OT. Well, I'm going to install. And not all the I'm environments, just so everybody knows, this entire platform is not solely based on ICS. We have other environments like hospitals and banks and stuff on the way. Nice. All right. So we are officially out of money, but that doesn't mean we can't do some uh, fundamental cyber hygiene stuff. We've got two people. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, harden this system. I'm going to harden the engineer workstation. And I'm going to end my turn and hope that the... Um, I'm going to hope that the board gives me money. Come on, CFO. Hook me up. Here we go. Budget acquired. Thank goodness. How much did we get? 40 Gs. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain, but I can't hire a new FTE for 40000 Um, I don't know what get the some... max is anymore, but that's pretty high. That's good. No, no, it's awesome. I can use 40000 I probably have a bunch of money left over by the time I, I win, but um, hiring new staff, FTE is very expensive. Um, normally, businesses might hire consultants or professional services, which oddly has a higher cost. But because the money is a different color, uh, which gets completely outside of cybersecurity, it's more OPEX than CAPEX. And for some reason, businesses love spending OPEX. Okay. Let's continue to harden our area, change those default creds, patch this system. Oh, I can't do that. See, all these things don't cost money. I, I have the $40,000 to help deal with fires that are that are um, that flare up. Okay. Let's continue harden and patch and let's update. Oh wait. Yeah, we can update the firmware. That'll be good. You like our new little um, action animations now? It lets you know, hey, it's going up into the queue with that little yeah, that nice I little do, animation I do like that, that Aaron created. Uh-oh. We have an asset out of service. It will cost us money until we fix it, right? So basically, Clint was saying this earlier. This is our P&L, or you know, this is how much money the business is generating. And when you have things out of order, um, you're not making money. Now, this is a little concerning. I'm going to reboot the asset, but it's our controller. Let's see. Continue to harden this particular area of the network. Asset rebooted. Let's see if it goes back online. Excellent. Okay, so let's get those patches put on there. Oh, no, we've got something else offline. Guys, we have a serious problem. We have multiple devices going down over here. Um, let's continue to harden these things. Yikes. Let's yeah, see. here we the, go. Um, it does not cost you. That's a that's a, a textual error. It's not going to cost you money each turn um, that it um, that it's out of service. But the reason it's out of service is probably if you if you patched something and you didn't have the ICS certification that can take things down too. Oh, good to know. So I was I was operating outside of my uh, sketch my skill. Yeah, here we go. So Clint's referring to the ICS vendor certification. This says you got to get vendor approval before applying. So this is a re a real thing that just happened, guys. I come from a non ICS OT background. So I'm applying um, historically appropriate IT concepts to an OT environment. And this is one of those wrinkles that is presenting itself. I'm guys got to patch all the things and I am patching all the things and I'm literally attacking and, and uh, crippling my own network. So let me reboot. And hopefully uh, these things will probably just keep flip flopping. Okay, let me change the default creds on this. Just slowly continuing to do the blocking and tackling. Let's see, here we go. Oh my God, more assets out of service. 
you can see the PNL is going down. Man, good thing I got that budget when I did request it because I think that they're going to be a little pissy with me that I'm I'm costing um I'm 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 having downtime. Okay, let's patch this firewall. <laughs> yes, South Carolina is a good time. All right, let's install endpoint security. Oh wait, we don't have any assets. Okay, let's go. I feel like this game may have gotten a little away from me, Clint. Asset rebooted. Here we go. We've got our ICS vendor patch certification, so hopefully that helps us. You can it's see only here. It's good for 10 turns. Okay. This um, vulnerability is a weak password, but you can see I can't do anything around it because um, end users don't know what a strong password is. We need to educate them. And that is done right here, enforcing strong passwords. Because we can tell them, hey, complex, 24 characters, capital letter, letters, numbers, all that stuff. But if we're not technically requiring them to do that through group policy or some other uh, method, then they can just do whatever they want. So let's go ahead and do this so we can fix those weak passwords. Deploy USB security. I'm curious what that is. Secure the USB ports on an asset from USB containing malware. You know what? I'm going to do it just for the workstation, and I'm going to tell you why, guys. Stuxnet, S-T-U-X-N-E-T. -E Look it up. You don't know about it. Stuxnet was an attack on an Iranian nuclear enrichment facility that I won't get into the politics behind it, but the way that that site was compromised and ultimately the, the the enrichment facility physically destroyed was because of a malicious usb being put into the engineer's workstation so this attack is not just real it's quite devastating it, it, it set that plant back like 10 years all right we've got one more resource to work let's go ahead and put well this guy was compromised earlier. This guy patches, hardening, sim. Let's install EDR in the sim, right? If a bad guy threat actor gets into our sim and misconfigures it, then we don't have any visibility. There we go. Oh, we're being awarded here. Password policy created. We can... Changing default creds and enforcing strong passwords is the foundation of good security posture. So true. Good. We got awarded here. You now have the maximum defense against social engineering attack. Of course, nothing is 100% guaranteed. So, so true. Guys, real quick, you can never be 100% secure. Every business, no matter how secure they are, will always have some residual risk. So no matter what we're doing at this manufacturing facility, there will be some residual risk. There's actually um, kind of think of like a logarithmic curve. There'll be depreciating return on investment in security tooling at some point, um, which is why you wouldn't get the funding to invest. So let's take a look at our network, see where we're at. We got none of these yellow shields with the red exclamation points over here. So that's pretty good. Our PCS historians still got some, some action going on. So let's do EDR on those. And yeah, I'm going to install E. Well, I'm going to install EDR for telemetry. You'll notice, guys, I have decided not to really care about the workstations, including this remote one. Uh, I'm not really worried about my DMZ environment. This is an area that could be compromised, right? It's internet facing. But when I'm doing the risk analysis of where to spend my time, where to spend my resources, and in what order to do it, I have to make hard choices. And it's not that I don't care about these engineering workstations. It's just that I care about these assets more than these assets at this time. I want to catch another loiterer. That's what I want to do. Absolutely all about risk here. I've got three people. I'm going to install here. I want to see about catching more, more loiterers. We've got security, social engineering up. 
ICS security monitoring, what is this? Provides visibility into compromised ICS assets. Well, let's do that for sure. Two people, two turns. I like it. And then let us implement strong life. Don't don't want them. Don't want the threat actors in the parking lot of the company, right? Look at look at this guy in this truck, right? Little parking lot over here in the corner, sitting over there with a Pringles can, wireless antenna, pointing it at the facility. Not on my watch. <laughs> see, here we go. Strong Wi-Fi security implemented. All right. We've still got two. Um, it was a two turn for the ICS security monitoring. Guys, I am hoping that when we hit end turn, that nothing comes of this, right? This visibility into any of these devices compromised. So we are hoping none of them are compromised. Let's go. We got one turn, one person. What are we going to do? Let's install a VPN. Remote workforce, work from home, 2022, post-COVID. Got to have a VPN. Got to have a VPN, y'all. All right, here we go. Yes. Security monitoring and ICS specific threat monitoring have been implemented. No hacker can elude you. ICS security proper methodology. Good. Ah, it feels good. I just want to I just want to take a moment to talk to everybody about the emotional roller coaster that I've been on the last 30 minutes. I went from feeling great going to Starbucks because we had we had established a level of security program that made me comfortable enough to walk away from my desk. Then our gateway firewall gets popped. I I personally start knocking over my own OT in cost and PO. I run out of budget. I'm I'm going to the quick mart and double fisting pink liquid, right? The Pepto. Now I got 40 G's from my boss. All of my HMI stuff is secure and operational. The PL still in green. I don't want to. I don't want to speak too soon, but I'm feeling pretty comfortable, Clint. I feel, I feel pretty chill right now. So let's just continue doing the right things. I'm going to start focusing on hardening the. Um, actually, I'm going to focus in on hardening this internet-facing area because that's where I I would. You should have just made the coffee for. Yeah, exactly. Well, the thing is, I want to get a little. I want to get a little strut in, you know what I mean? Stretch the legs. I've been hunched over in a dark room with just the glow of a monitor to keep me company. All right, let's install EDR and system patches on this DMZ historian. Guys, real quick too, these historians, audit logs, if you get breached, if you have an active adversary in your environment, if you are compromised, logs are the only thing that you're going to be able to look at in order to understand what the heck has happened what is happening and where they have moved. Very important. Let's go. Got our VPN installed. Right, let, let me do this. Let's switch that music here. We got our VPN. I'm going to turn the music on. How do I... Um, how do I modify the level of the volume? Yeah, mute it. You can only go to the settings. Yeah. Uh, you can only modify the volume from the start screen settings. Um, I'll put in a okay. uh, a feature request to make to make it to where you could change the volume from in game. Okay, that sounds fine. I don't think my SQA engineer is watching the live stream right now. <laughs> That's fine. So all right, we've got um three people. 24,000. We're, we're looking good. Okay, guys, EDR on the terminal server is a brilliant idea. Now I finally have the time and, you know, resources, frankly, to be able to do this correctly uh, and, and focus on this particular area. You can see this is our VPN. I should have probably put an EDR on that. People, oh, guys, I'm telling you right now, um, VPN concentrators, th those, those are attacked. <laughs> like, those get popped. You got to protect your, your uh, VPN concentrator. Here we go. Oh, no. We got an asset out of service. 
We're just going to pretend that this is normal business operations. Is a legacy piece um, of software. <clears throat> oh no! A oh, terminal server. That's not. That's yeah. You didn't do that one. That is uh. The 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 red team did that, and I don't know why they would deny it rather than trying to control it. That doesn't make sense. That's okay. I'm going to reboot it. Oh, I think I know uh, why. I'm on to you here. Guys, now I need to start hardening all the crap around. Again, like I'm this is this this terminal server is the blast zone. This is ground zero. So now I'm looking at the blast radius where that lateral movement would go and I'm hardening it. We got our asset rebooted. Oh no. Oh no. That means that it's not compromised. That means it's been targeted. So you probably have something inside of your DMZ. They're trying to get to the PCN. Okay. No problem. I got you. Check this out. So it didn't, it, it looks like the attack probably may or may not have been successful, but that, that means it's been targeted. Your, your network IDS picked that up and it tells you which asset had been targeted. Hmm. Okay, guys. So basically, I just did a lot of work on this device. I probably should have hardened this one, but I didn't. Let's go. Actually, Let's go. no. Again. Look, look. You don't oh. have an IDS. You don't have an IDS inside your DMZ. The only IDS that pick that can pick that up on that firewall is in your PCN. You've got something active in your PCN. Oh, because I don't have IDS. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. So Let the me... orange zone Let is me... the only one that has the IDS. Okay, I made a mistake. I need to install a network sensor here. <laughs> Whoops. But either way, that, um... that tells you deductive reasoning tells you that something is in the orange zone, your PCN. You got something in there yeah. compromised. Okay. Good thing we invested heavily in, in securing that en engineering workstation. I got you. Yeah, it I looks like you. you're you're frustrating you're frustrating the 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 enemy right now, and it's not able to compromise the uh, historian or the engineering workstation. So it's looking elsewhere to try to get to the um, the process zone. The Good. Zone. And now I'm gonna. All right, engineering workstation's hardened. That's hardened. That's hardened. Now keep in mind, you may, still, you may still have zero days. The only way you can find zero days is by doing pen testing. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I don't want to. I don't want to invest in that. Honestly, like it. Uh, it's like so expensive. Ten thousand bucks. Two people, three turns. It's so expensive. Um, let's see. Yes. Vulnerability mapping. What does this give us here? Carry got jokes. Yeah, less of a chance to find vulnerabilities compared to a vulnerability assessment, but less resource intensive. Oh, I see. So I already went all in with the assessment, so I don't need to do the mapping. Um, Assessments will not see. find all vulnerabilities all the time. So, that, you know, there's there still may be lingering vulnerabilities. Yeah, definitely. That are not, that are not zero days. Let's create a backup process, I guess. Um Oh my God. Let's create a backup process. Just in case it's ransomware. Okay, here we go. So you're just now creating your backup process, uh, processes. You still have to create um, restore points on each, indi in each individual device. Yeah, that terminal server got targeted again. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, I don't have enough resources. Oh crap! All my resources are are now. As far as the IR goes, I can. Okay. Re create restore. Okay, 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 okay. So I don't need to activate I right now, but I don't have any resources to do anything. So let's hope. Hope is definitely not a strategy for information security. Okay, system backups implemented. Now you can create restore points. Yeah, so let's do this. Well, damn. 
Well, let's see what our creating a restore point does for me. It creates a backup in which the asset can be reverted back to in the event of a compromise. This asset will revert back in the exact state it was. Okay. So the thing is, and I don't know how it works in the game, but in reality, you would never want to create a restore point on an actively compromised thing because you'd literally be restoring <laughs> back to a known compromise well, state. It's not compromise as being targeted, but you at that point, you probably want to assume it's uh, being targeted. Now, here's another thing, too. I would have to assume, look at your profit loss meter. It's going further down. You probably have uh, malware installed somewhere and data being exfiltrated. Oh, this isn't good. No, it's not. This is Stream Beats by Harris Heller. Harris Heller puts out all sorts of, of uh, music through Stream Beats and it's copyright free. Uh, so a lot of streamers will use it as background music because you won't get copyright hit. Not that we're monetizing this video, but it's just a best practice. All right, so I've got malware actively in my environment. Um, you probably need to start doing some threat hunting if you have the skills. Uh, uh, make sure you have your endpoint protection installed over. Now keep in mind that just because you have your EDR uh, installed, your endpoint protection and detection, it doesn't mean it's going to automatically pick up things, but if, if you're deploying stealth techniques and stealth um, measures, then you might not be detecting it. Doing threat hunting is going to give you a better chance of finding those compromised devices that are using stealth. Yeah, I hear you. Here's the problem. It takes three people, three turns. So I'm heavily committing my resources to get to threat hunting. So... You know, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have that hot fix out yet. But yeah, it doesn't. It does not make sense that security skill or that security awareness training is a prerequisite of security skills because it's two different. But but that's fine. I've already purposes. I've already paid for the security awareness, so that doesn't really bother me in this instance. That's what true. bothers me is locking up my whole team for three days while I know that we're being actively targeted. So yeah, I'm just going to continue doing what I can um with what i have Let, where's uh let me see i mean you're nine turns away from winning uh all uh the um weather the storm yeah i'm just gonna continue hardening everything around this space and normally uh, I think you recommend 75 turns right we configured it for 50 so the stream wouldn't go too long but yeah, I think the default is 75. It looks like 50 consistently now 50 turns is good for an hour stream. Even, yeah. you know, when we're taking our time sort of. Yep. All right. So I'm going to, you do have a, a threat intelligence score of 40%. That's which good. Mean, you know, you're, you've, you've been passively gathering intelligence. You did, you did, you did gather like it. on a couple of them. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. I rebooted. Because I didn't want to... Oh. It was the gateway firewall. That's okay. I mean, we're getting 3% a turn. This is... Here, I'm going to deploy USB security to this thing. Um, deploy... Uh, update antivirus on my domain controller. They are hammering Again, that the problem terminal, is the terminal server. server. Yes. Full asset update. Your commitment to keeping everything updated is impressive. No rest for the weary... So new vulnerabilities are sure to pop up. Okay. Let's go. Let's do this. So, all right. Now let's create a restore point. I love that it costs zero people, zero dollars. Oh, wow. You can just go buck wild, create restore points on everything. Huh. Yep. Yeah, I, it should not. Yeah, it doesn't make sense that you can create restore points on uh, on the uh, embedded devices, but yeah, that can be edited. I I think you know just as a I don't want to call it a, a request or whatever, but since it's free to do and you can click on everything and do it, I, I almost wonder if like one solid create restore points for all devices button might make more sense. Yeah. 
because you know what I mean I'm basically just clicking around trying to see if I got them all. Yeah, it, we debated it is, whether we need to make it like have a, at least a somewhat of a cost. Yeah, it's tough though because it's like we got to do it like a half a FTE or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe do it by zone. Create restore point for the zone. I don't know. Yeah. All right, let's look. I still got two people. I, I basically have all the all the business staff taking snapshots of their own machines. So let me focus on. Ooh, a pen test. Do I have money for that? Yes, I'm gonna do a full pen test. Come at That'll me, uncover more vulnerabilities. It has a better chance of of uncovering more of your basic vulnerabilities, your public vulnerabilities, and it also has a chance to discover zero days. And the zero days will be noted in the vulnerabilities box. Okay. Oh, there it Detect is. This now, I created a, re a restore point for this thing already, I thought. So I have to activate... You can always create restore points anytime. You can update no, I know, the but restore how do I... points anytime. How can I how can I use it? How can I restore this machine to a known good state? You uh, might need a way to turn. Oh yeah, through IR, yeah. that's what it is. All right, let me activate IR. Video. And let me do something that whoops. Let me do something that takes one turn. Um system patches on the sim. Okay, ready? I'm feeling pretty good about us. IR mode activated. There we go. All right, let's do this. I feel look good about us too, Jerry. <laughs> Restore from backup. I love it. Um, this is interesting. Let me gather forensics. Oh no, I can't. Here, let me do that. If I had, if I had it, I would have gathered forensics to see if we could get the threat intelligence score up to a um, hundred before the turns end. Okay, cool. Test completed. Let's see. Ooh, another compromised asset detected. The terminal server is now equally oh, they compromised. Fi they finally, they finally uh, got it. Okay. So we are in IR, so we can't really do this. Can I restore from backup? That probably won't matter because they compromised it. Um, damn it. I am going to, I'm going to restore from it backup. That's why I took the backups. Well, hey, uh, from a procedural perspective, do you clean it and then restore? Or does restore just revert back to a snapshot? Yeah, restoring is a form of cleaning it. Okay. If, if, you, if you had a clean image in the first place. Yeah. So, hold on. Did this fail? I just did a... Restore from backup on DMZ Historian succeeded and it's still compromised. So the, the backup had a compromised image on yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Damn. All right. Well, let's do gather forensics and clean asset. Because they both take two turns and I'll get more um, telemetry or um, threat intelligence. And dude, and we're either, cruising um... on threat intelligence. That that red uh, indicator, the red alert that's telling you that that box is being targeted, that that red mm -hmm. alert is not going away. So that's either a bug or they just keep attacking it. Mm. I'm not well, sure. Well, it certainly which. got my attention. I'm we'll going to end the turn. It. Look at the PL just went all the way up to max. That's that's, that's probably good. the thing. You probably had you probably that terminal server probably had some malware on it that was exfiltrating data. I love it. Now we're at 78%. So this is good. This guy is still, oh, it's still waiting two turns. So I can do, what can I do? Oh, it went away. I can't really do it. I know. I, I was just seeing if I could get value for my time, but I can't really. All right. So I'm just going to deactivate IR. Oh, no, no. Um, so this is one of those tricky ones that's in the game. I can deactivate IR now because it'll take a turn and these two should complete, right? Yes. All right. So I'm deactivating IR with the expectation that cleaning 
the asset and gathering forensics is going to completely address my problem. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it works out. Let's see. How, let's see if it pays off. All right, guys, I'm feeling good. We got forensics evidence. We've completed our pen test. I think this one is from our old. Oh my god. This box is owned. I don't want to. So, okay. So I made the mistake of of getting ahead of myself and assuming that cleaning the asset would solve the problem. This box is still owned. I have to. I do have to redo um, activating IR, which stinks. So now I've got three people, but I'm going to go ahead and do patching and stuff. That takes one turn. <clears throat> So for my um, vulnerability, uh, my penetration testing, can I, let me do this. Do you have any zero days? I was just curious. Oh, default creds on my feed yeah, pen you, concentrator. You, Format yeah, you got some zero days there. How do I fix that? Is it system patch or hardening? Patching. Patching. Default creds that were so If gross. you look, yeah. Here, I'm going to do the default creds, even though I agree with you. Default creds. Script kitties can punch through. Zero days, you know, you do need a more sophisticated actor. All right. Yep. So it's going to... I've got one turn left. Oh, I was really hoping to get my threat intelligence up to 100. Not weather the storm. Oh, close. Close. Okay. Um, got the got friend to do it. Can you get new forensics again? No. Oh, it's still. What's your? Uh, oh, you had a failure. See, your your action log was flashing red. So yeah, it means you had a failure. Oh, cleaning the asset. Don't. Nope. Um, yeah, your log, your action log. It'll the word will flash red if there was a failure. Well, good thing that That's we're near the end. So yeah. check this out. Uh, I mean, I'll restore from backup, but. Even though I weathered the storm, you could argue that I'm being I'm being fired at the end of this turn. <laughs> All right, guys, we won. We won. The blue team. Look at the results too. Uh, look, click on results to see what all they had ownership of. See what all they pwned. Hold on, let me go to the view other. Oh boy. Okay. Actually, no, go back. Yeah, go back. You'll see. Go back. So they didn't really have click. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they man. only had a, a workstation. Big Tim deal. Wilson's computer. You're close to historic. a threat intelligence victory, though. Yeah. Let me see what the other had. So they had. Does this mean that they had found some of my. Um, yeah, well, well, what you see there is, is everything that was discovered. It's hard to see. Oh, I, keep this I don't know what. Me. So the 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 reason why the reason why some of those are port scam and not service enumerated is probably because you cut off their access at some point, and so they knew about those assets, but they no longer had a access. To to pivot on those mm -hmm. you could see this dmz firewall this is one that they were targeting a bit gateway firewall had been compromised at one point server firewall that's this one so i guess they they got in here right and they were they found this firewall and this firewall so here guys network segmentation did its job right they got in here and they couldn't get out of here that's how i interpret that so this is this was really good. Oh, obviously, I can save the report off if I want to save that locally to my machine and be able to use that um, to go over it. If I was working, if I was playing this game um, as a professional development with a team, or if I was doing a tabletop exercise, I could use this report to help inform the discussion on how we how we performed, where we had gaps, uh, the decision making process that I had made. Uh, throughout there. So that's going to do it for this uh, Let's Play stream. We're going to be doing more of these Let's Play, uh, you know, from the red, from the blue, uh, manufacturing, healthcare. We'll, we'll be jumping around, dicing around. We'll have special guests come and play with us. 
Uh, but I had a good time. Definitely learned some more about the ICS OT space. I continue to, <laughs> I continue to attack my own services by accident. So I need to stop doing that. Clint, you want to take this out? OT Any lessons. final thoughts? Yeah, valuable OT lessons there. Uh, don't forget to catch Jerry and I doing a dual live stream on the 15th. Um, and so there's that going on. And I think it's, I forget what time it is. I don't have the, do I have the 11 a.m. Eastern? Yep. And so you'll be able to catch his live stream on uh, his Simply Cyber channel on YouTube. And then mm -hmm. the other one will be on, that's Simon's channel. Um, forget what. Infosec.live. Okay. Yeah. Infosec.live, right? So um, thanks, Carrie, for the compliment there. Um, so. Yeah, catch us on the 15th. And on that note, the one last thing I want to say is that, um, you know, if you are interested in using ThreadGen Red versus Blue, this platform, the cybersecurity simulation platform, we have an entire professional portal where you can, it's got educational material. Right now, it's an early access because some of the educational material is still being developed uh, by yours. Truly right there next to me, uh, Jerry is, is developing a lot of content. I'm developing some content. So it's educational content that goes along with this red versus blue. There's a lot of labs, as you saw in the beginning of this video. There's a lab section. What those labs are, all of the courses, almost all of the courses, have labs that directly correlate to red versus blue. So the, the courses are going to direct you to go into the game and play specific labs with different objectives. And so the it's not just playing the game but it's correlated to those labs. But the use cases for red versus blue is you've got tabletop exercises, team building, cybersecurity education, user awareness, and you know the most important aspect, as Jerry pointed out earlier, is it's active adversary. So while you're playing, whether it's against, obviously it's active adversary if you're playing another person because you can play this over the network, but if you're playing against the computer, everything that you do, you've got that active component playing against you as you saw. So on that note, um, I guess we'll take it out from here and we'll see you next time, everybody.